You know we're being extra fancy on this week's episode. Oh, are we being extra fancy? Yeah, we both have bubbly water. Oh yeah, La Croix. La Croix. Though I think you're C'est délicieux. Ah. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try. My friend, I, I mean, even, I don't even know if the company pronounces it. In I French. think I did like a halfway decent Russian accent for somebody who has never spoken Russian last week, but I ain't even gonna try for French. I can't do it. Uh, but I do think yours is a bit more fancy. Yeah. Because mine doesn't have a weird flavor name. It's just natural mango enhanced. Or no, essenced. Oh, yeah. These yeah. these flavor names are like a combination of French and Spanish words. Yeah. Which one is that one? I don't know. Cerise limon. So yeah. cherry lem, lime. Cherry there lime. You go. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Actually, I like those flavors better. Yeah, but it's pretty good. they are more expensive. It's my favorite. Because they are fancier. Yep. So sometimes I just stick with the mango, you know? It gets the job done. You know who doesn't get the job done? Who doesn't get the job done? These lame superheroes, man. Oh, man. They don't get anything done. Actually, you know what? The first one on our list today, uh, he looks like he could be sort of good, but he just hinders himself. Okay. So, okay. yeah, we're going to get to him. Um, But once again, welcome back to the College Info Geek Podcast, where lame superheroes somehow ask us questions, even though most of them... Uh, were created before the internet was created, and they probably died before the internet became popular. Yep. Somehow, some way. Well, I mean, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and also in the comic, I don't know why I said cinematic, because in all of Marvel universes, there's like a zillion universes. So That's true. Yeah. Anything can happen, man. All things are possible with infinite universes. Yep. Which makes it easy to, to yeah, completely muck up your storylines and be like, it was all fine. He didn't die. That was actually the Earth 5122 version of Spider-Man. Yeah. But Earth, actually, I feel like I'm not enough of a nerd because I don't remember which Earth is the uh, proper Earth or the main Earth. I don't remember. I don't know. There is a number. Probably one. Yeah. Some angry person will put in the comments what the number is, and then we'll know. Okay. Anyway, we got questions today. Uh, By the way, I think I forgot to say this last week. If you have questions... You can ask them over in our subreddit, which is the College Info Geek community spot. You can find that over at collegeinfogeek.com slash community. Ask your questions. We have currently, as we record this, uh, there is a topic request thread for January, and I've started experimenting with trying to uh, pick a specific focus for topic requests. So January's topic request focus is career questions. So if you've got questions about internships, about interviewing, about resumes, all that kind of good stuff, Uh, We want to start mixing a little bit of career-related stuff into the content, maybe on the podcast um, and on the YouTube channel especially. I know we've done a lot of career stuff on the podcast, to be honest, but almost none on the YouTube channel. So Hmm. if you have career questions, if you're trying to get an internship or a job or you're just afraid you're going to be living in a cardboard box after you graduate, you can go over to that topic request thread or you can make a thread of your own and lots of people will probably answer you and then your questions may end up on the podcast as well. But this week, our first question is coming from Mannequin. Mannequin. And uh, so I was saying, like, this guy, he seems like he could be a good hero, but he hinders himself. So his power is he can summon his genetic relatives from the history of human evolution. So basically he can summon, like, a protoplasmic blob, which is useless, you know, and may- maybe if it had intelligence or something, it could slip under doors and sneak around. But let me tell you, protoplasmic blobs, they weren't that smart. Okay. They're just like dumb. He can like summon. Do they have to be his ancestors personally? Uh, I mean, probably. But like, to be honest, a protoplasmic blob is probably going to be the common ancestor of like all humans. No, I mean, like, can he pull like infinite cavemen? Oh, uh, I think it's just one. One of each. So he can, he can, yeah, he can pull one protoplasmic blob, one caveman, and one super smart future dude who seems to be able to levitate and has like future powers. So yeah, this guy looks like he's awesome. But I mean, I, if I were him, I would literally only ever pull that guy. Yeah. I would never do the caveman. I don't know. I feel like you could develop a pretty cool video game out of it though. Hmm. I like those games where you have to switch between people and they have different yeah, powers. Yeah, they have different it's like puzzle cool. solving abilities. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like Sly 3 or 2. The caveman's like Murray, the hippo dude. And then the super You're smart future me. dude's like Bentley. I'm sorry. 
I forgot that hippos trigger you. They're scary. Or did I forget? They're so scary. <laughs> anyway, man against questions, probably coming from the protoplasmic blob, to be honest, is uh, how do I use Twitter professionally? Because as you all know, protoplasmic blobs need to have a professional Twitter presence that if they're going to make the most in today's economy. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by Protoplasmic Blob Suit Supply. Yeah. For all of your protoplasmic blob suits, we have all the nice cuts, all the fits, which doesn't make sense because they can fit into anything. Yeah. <laughs> all right. uh, but seriously, good. yeah, good question. How do you use Twitter professionally? Um, I've heard this question from several people, actually. People I know personally. They get on it and they're like, what do I do? Because you hear all these these blog posts and podcasts, people telling you that you should have a professional Twitter presence if you want to be everywhere and have a good personal brand, you know? Uh, and I think I figured out how to use Twitter semi-professionally a long time ago, but I want to hear what you think, you know? Because I've been on it for so long that I feel like a lot of this has become second nature. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's uh, What's obvious to me that isn't obvious to everyone else? I don't know. Well, I guess one... A good picture. Uh, yeah, good good point. Good picture. If it's good a picture point. of some random internet gif, jif, I don't really care, then I'm not going to know it's you. It doesn't seem very professional. Mm. But the bio is probably important. I guess the really, really obvious one is don't post horribly unprofessional things. Yeah. Don't be like super wasted at the club right now. Hope I don't have to have a hangover at that interview. Like, yeah. why, why would, don't tweet that? That's true. That's a bad idea. I feel like that that is obvious, though. Yeah, that is you know, obvious. Every but, every career counselor in the world is like, don't better yeah, not put yet, your your pictures holding your it. Bud Light on your and yet on your Facebook. Still do it. Look, if you're gonna put um, partying pictures on your Facebook or your Twitter, at least be holding like a classy craft beer from like some cool microbrewery where you can tell a story. Like, yeah, these guys, you know, they were. They were IT consultants, and they were just like, I'm actually, tired. I watched them gather the hops. Exactly. I'm tired of the grind. I'm tired beautiful. of being plugged into the grid. I'm tired of this job that doesn't fulfill me. I'm going to quit my job, and I got my best bud here. His name's Ben. He's got a great beard. We both wear flannel all the time. We reclaimed some wood from the local uh, railroad station that was actually been shut down for, for a long time. And uh, you know, over on Indiegogo, we got some friends and family to invest in some home brewing equipment. And we just like, we have our first batch coming out today. You know? Yeah. We call it the King Hop. Okay. We call it the King Hop. It's eleven dollars for a four pack. Yeah, seems reasonable. And it tastes terrible. It's way over hopped. Yeah, but because it's you, like a quadruple IPA. But if you but convince yourself you like it, exactly. You're, cool now. you're gonna look cool. And if you post this on social media, like, you're gonna get like six likes. Yeah. It's like four more likes than you usually get, man. So that, <laughs> that's a good tip. So there you go. Yeah. So, only drink craft beer from microbreweries in your party picks. Yeah. Now, I wrote an article a long time ago, it's a classic, about how I used Twitter to start taking myself seriously online, mm -hmm. and I started using it as an extension of my personal brand, and I started saying things that I meant sincerely, because Facebook, I had kind of just posted a lot of really sarcastic or ironic stupid things and like yeah. cynical things and not really caring or wanting to be sincere about my passions mm -hmm. to a bunch of high school friends. You know, they don't really know me for that reason. They know me for stupid nonsense that I did in high school. Yeah. So I, I started using Twitter to start, like, tweeting ideas and links and resources and just reaching out to new people in mm -hmm. the language learning area, programming, productivity, things like that, so that I could start taking myself a little bit more seriously and developing my personal brand. Yeah. That makes sense. I just remembered uh, my entire Twitter... Yeah, <laughs> my entire Twitter history is in like this Excel document I have on my computer so I can go and find my very first tweet that I ever made. Ooh. Even though I no longer use Excel, I can still open it and it wants me to pay for it, but I'm not going to. Uh, okay, my first tweet ever, Monday, May 11th, 2009. That is I've been in Twitter for eight years. That's way before I had Twitter. Uh, my first tweet ever was checking out Seismic on Techzilla and decided to start doing Twitter. Bam. So it looks like I'm I'm definitely back then just kind of doing static or status kind of stuff. Happy birthday, Jason. School's over. I'm so happy. Now I need a job. <laughs> uh, but I think as I 
I think pretty quickly, actually, looking at this, as I started using Twitter more, I started to realize kind of the power of it. So I have always viewed Twitter as, for lack of a better term, the cocktail party of social media, hmm. because it is easier to reach out to somebody who you have a common interest with, or maybe whose work you admire, who you follow, or who you might want to connect with on Twitter than it is on most other social networks. You know, if you friend someone on Facebook randomly, they're going to be like, who the heck is this that weirdo? That seems more personal. Yeah, Facebook is for friends and family and minions jokes and never going to Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, it, I honestly think Instagram is pretty cool, um, but it's mainly for pictures, you know? Um, Snapchat is, we. I'm, kind of, I'm still trying to figure out Snapchat. Uh, and I think Snapchat is actually pretty darn cool in certain respects. I also don't like Snapchat for certain reasons. I think a lot of people just use Snapchat as like a way to share stuff that's really unexciting and I don't know, like not worthy of being shared, which is something I think we talked about in deep, the Deep Work episode. Yeah. But I do think that Snapchat actually gives you a lot of power for personal interactions with people. So I like it. But with Twitter, you know, if I'm like, I want to tweet Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot, who's like one of the most well-known After Effects developers in the industry. I can just do it, you know? Yeah. And maybe he responds to me, maybe he doesn't, but it, it's never weird. And I can honestly say like part of my success on YouTube is due to Twitter because two people that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, Luke Sizemore, who runs the channel Young Town, and Satchel Drakes, who runs the channel Satch Bags Goods, both gaming channels on YouTube. At the time when I started following them, they were way bigger than my channel by huge orders of magnitude. I really liked their stuff. So I started sharing their videos on Twitter. And when they would tweet, I would reply sometimes. And uh, eventually, both of them ended up sharing my videos. You know, and when a YouTuber with 20,000 followers and 100,000 subscribers shares your video, like, you know, it's not like instant overnight fame, but it definitely moves the needle a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, even even beyond that, because I think that that sounds maybe a little transactional or something. I think that is where the seeds were planted for being becoming friends with those people. And I've spent hours talking with Luke over Skype. I went and did one of those escape room things in New York City with Satch and had an awesome time. Like we went and got Chinese food at 1 a.m. in the morning in New York City. And that all started from Twitter, you know, and those are friendships, but they're also professional relationships. And yeah. now Satch is working with the Internet Creators Guild and all the, you know, we were like planning this this video project we were going to work on in New York City if uh, all the things fell together. So it's just a lot less intimidating. intimidating. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so easy to just have a little tiny micro interaction with somebody and you never know what it's going to come to. Um, I actually got featured in a CGP Grey video once because it was a Saturday afternoon and he was tweeting, hey, I really need footage of Total Annihilation, which is this RTS game from 1998 from one of my videos. Uh, and I need a very specific type of battle scenario and I can't figure it out myself. Does anyone want to do it for me? <laughs> and I guess I was the only person on Twitter that day who happened to still have Total Annihilation on my computer and who happened to know all like the cheats and uh, like scenario builder tools that I needed to set up that exact scenario. So I was able to do that. It took me a few hours, but I did it. I sent him the footage and it's in his video and I have a shout out in the description, you know? Nice. Like, again, not instant fame, but it's pretty darn cool that a YouTuber with 2 million subscribers that I was, you know, I'm a huge fan of, I was able to interact with him on Twitter and uh, have my work featured in his video. Freaking awesome. I was like super stoked that day. So the way that I use Twitter professionally is number one, I reach out to people that I admire. And I don't reach out usually to ask them questions right off the bat or to ask for stuff. Usually what I do is uh, I'm following what I like to call the fan first mentality. And for me, fan first means exactly what it sounds like. Be a fan first. Share their work. If they tweet out a video, if they tweet out something that they made, respond with some feedback on it. Say, hey, I really like that video. Uh, or if they tweet just something they're interested in, you can respond to them directly and comment on it. Um, like Hank Green tweets articles all the time from other people. And if you wanted to, you could respond to him, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm like pulling a lot of really kind of famous people off the top of my head because they're the people I follow. But 
Martin, maybe you're a web developer and maybe there's maybe like am. some web developers you follow that, uh, that I don't know, you know, I don't oh, know. Yeah. let's just, let's go I'm, to your Twitter. I'm fairly certain that I reached out to one of the previous, uh, vice presidents of Evernote through Twitter and then got to interview him for a class project. There you go. <laughs> you interviewed one of the vice presidents of Evernote through Twitter. Exactly. You know, and I'm looking at the um, the front page of your Twitter. You t you retweeted this uh, sorting algorithm illustration, which is really cool. Yeah, it is really you know? cool. So that's not you reaching out to somebody, but that is helping to kind of build this online persona that hopefully mirrors your professional aspirations and your interests. Yeah. If I go to your Twitter page and I'm like, oh, Martin's tweeting uh, algorithm sorting diagrams. Well, then now I've started to build this perception that, okay, he's interested in algorithms, which probably means he's a developer and he's probably passionate about developing because he is tweeting stuff about it. That's yeah. pretty cool. Looks like from that front page, I like programming and Nintendo. Yeah, absolutely. So on your Twitter, number one, reach out to people and connect with them using fan first. And then, you know, once you've kind of built a connection with them through that, then you can maybe start to talk to them a little more personally. Um, maybe you'll start to have some conversations and eventually those will naturally uh, drift off into other social networks where better interaction can be had, maybe email, stuff like that, you know, and I'll leave that up to you to figure out how exactly it would work. One example would be uh, the channel How to Adult on YouTube. They were much bigger than me at one point. I was following them on Twitter and definitely, you know, just doing fan first. I was sharing their videos all the time. I was commenting on their stuff. And then one day I saw they tweeted, hey, we want some fan submissions or some fan tips on uh, how to build good habits. And I was like, that's my opportunity. Well, that's a nice conveniently so, positioned request. Yeah, on Twitter, I replied with, hey, this is what I spend like half of my days researching. I have researched so much on habit development. I've read like a ton of books on it. I would love to write this video for you if you'd let me. And they did. Cool. They let me write the entire script. And that led to re to me writing about eight other scripts for them. I got paid for all of them. And then there was one time where they were like, hey, we need a video on skill development. Would you like to make it? And we'll just put it on our channel, you know? And uh, the day that video went live, 900 people subscribed to my YouTube channel. Nice. Whereas like 100 normally were subscribing a day at that point. So that was like a huge win for the channel. And it all came through... Uh, just building a small, really light-handed relationship on Twitter. And, uh, you know, beyond just the YouTube success, the guy who ran that channel, uh, T. Michael Martin, he ended up being on my podcast. He sent me an early copy of his book that he was writing. And now we have like a bi-monthly call where we just kind of check in and we keep each other accountable on work. Like we become friends now. It's awesome. So use Twitter to connect with people. Also use it to tweet things that you're interested in because it is like a personal website or like any other social media profile that is public, it is a reflection of your interests and it can help people connect you to what you want to be connected with. For Martin, maybe it's web development and algorithms and nerd stuff, you know? Yeah. And for me, maybe it's being Law, a baller. I'm such a nerd. I'm going to be tweeting pictures of Lambos and like chartreuse. You can hang out with 50 Cent. Yeah, exactly. Is that a color? Chartreuse, yeah, it's a yellowish green. Have you not seen the Blues Clues? <laughs> I think I was, I think I was going for a different word, but I just used Chartreuse. Oh, see, I, I'm, I'm new to being a baller, you know. Yep. I need some fine. practice. That's fine. Anyway, I think that was a pretty good answer to that question. So next question comes from, let's see here, Thunderstrike. Looks like Thor. Yeah, he, and he's, he's like literally Thor just a uh, hammer and thunder and Thor. Is this Thor? This is Thor. This is uh, back in the 90s, Marvel was like, everything has to be edgy and cool, so we're just going to rebrand Thor as Thunderstrike, except for he's got a sleeveless leather vest and a goatee. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I like Thor better. I think I like Thor better, too, you know? Okay. Anyway, Thunderstrike's question is, should I even bother paying attention to lectures if I can just get the presentation slides online? Ooh, crafty. Crafty, indeed. And yes! Absolutely. Here's the thing. If you're paying for the classes, you should go to the classes. You know, I'll let you have the philosophical debate in your head about whether or not you should attend class. But if you're going to go to class, I don't know, like, what are you what are you doing if you're not paying attention? You're just wasting 40 minutes of your day. That's true. Why I mean, you, why are you even there then? 
I'll put this up front. My philosophy on this may be a little different than what I did. So th this is always up to you to decide because I definitely spent a significant portion of my class time in college writing articles for College Info Geek or reading up on things I was personally interested in, you know, whatever. Because I had made a personal decision for certain classes that maybe I don't care if my grade is perfect in this class. It's happened a lot more later on in college when CIG was starting to become a thing and I was starting to kind of realize that this might be a career for me and I don't want to go be an IT dude. So like sitting in a computer networking class, probably not the best use of my time, but I needed it to pass my degree. So there you go. But philosophically, you know, if you're going to the class, you're spending 40 minutes in there, that is your learning time. And if you recall, for those of you who have read my book, 10 Steps to Earning Awesome Grades, which is free, there will be a link in the show notes. Um, I established this learning equation in the beginning, like the very first chapter of the book. Uh, so basically, like we have this desired preparedness or desired learning level you want to reach. Maybe that's being prepared enough to get an A on the test. Maybe it's being a super expert in the subject altogether. And um, the four components are your learning quality, which is the quality of the time you spend in class, plus your learning time, the time you spend in class. And then also you have your studying efficiency and the time you spend studying, you know? Well, if you're already in class for, for 40 minutes, why not make those 40 minutes as high quality as possible? So you have to spend less time studying and less time worrying about how efficient your study methods are, you know? Yeah. And you're already there. I mean, that completely works because there were several classes where I basically didn't study because I just paid attention enough to what they were saying in all the lectures and then kind of knew it by the time the exam came around. Yeah, exactly. Plus, it's all about context. Presentation slides are not meant to be everything. They are meant to work in the context of the lecture so your professor can take maybe a term that's sitting on a presentation slide and explain it. Or maybe if the definition is sitting there, you know, you skip class, you go around in your Lambo or whatever, be a baller. And then later that night, you pull up the slides and you're like, oh, nice. The marketing mix is defined right on this slide. I know what the four P's of marketing are. Bam, I'm gonna just study that and I'm gonna get an A on the test. Maybe you didn't realize that in the class, the professor gave six examples of different companies and how they use the marketing mix. And then on the test, he's actually gonna ask you, how does Johnson & Johnson Yep. use the marketing mix yeah, and how does do that, that relate to how method uses the marketing mix with their smaller but more premium offerings in target you know weird professors want you to listen exactly it's almost like they have power over your grade and uh you know not all professors are going to do this but i personally believe that presentation slides are a visual aid for a presentation they are not meant to be the way that you present all the information otherwise why the heck would you be up there talking to an audience you know, they could read a book. Yeah. You know, and you could read a book to learn it. But if you're paying to take classes and you're taking tests that are a reflection of what you learn in class, you should be paying attention in class. I honestly, I think that, you know, when I do a presentation, every time I go speak at a school or when I speak at a conference, my slides rarely ever have definitions or text on them. They have pictures. So I'll tell people, this is why an XLR connection is gonna make your microphone sound better than a USB connection. And maybe I have like a picture of what XLR looks like versus USB in my slides. That's it. Yeah. Some professors will do like fill in the blank slides. Again, you need to be in class to fill in those blanks. Otherwise you're not gonna know what you're doing. Yeah. You know? And um, I mean, some teachers will just read straight from a slide. Sometimes yeah. sometimes they're not gonna add extra value. That, that happens occasionally. I'm not even gonna pretend it doesn't. But if you pay attention, you like, know, you have context, you have the ability to ask for clarification if you need it. Yeah. And if you're paying attention in lectures, you have a better chance of building a good relationship with your professor, you know, which we've talked about in previous episodes is incredibly important. Yeah. Maybe more important than the actual content of the class. You know, maybe you don't actually care that much about that meteorology class you're taking for your science requirement, but maybe later on you end up needing a letter of recommendation from a professor and hey, you paid excellent attention in your meteorology class and uh, your professor knows that you know the difference between a cumulus cloud and a marshmallow and he's not afraid to write a letter telling somebody about that. Yeah, I don't know the difference. Well, marshmallows you can eat. You can eat a cloud, it's just water. Whoa. Look, they're the, the same thing, basically. 
So you're but, saying like uh, we could solve world hunger by like harvesting clouds? Yes, that's what I mean. Nice. On a foggy day, everyone eats. Oh my gosh. Yep. How come nobody's thought of this yet? Because it's the we worst figured it idea out, dude. I've ever heard. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> don't knock it till you try it. But yeah, it's just as a general rule, probably first assume that the teacher is providing something of value during their lectures. Yeah, and exactly. Let, let yourself be proved wrong. If you really, really, really don't need it and don't care and you don't need a relationship with them and they're mm. not adding value, you'll find it out. Yeah. But you shouldn't assume that first. That's a very good point. Let yourself be proved wrong. Give the class the benefit of the doubt. And if it's absolutely useless and you still have to take it, sure. You know, you do you. Yeah, I mean, if be you okay want to be efficient about it. But again, that learning efficiency or learning quality in class, the more you can maximize that, the less work you create for yourself when you should be having fun. Yeah, there were on. classes I never had to study for because the stuff was in the lectures and I was there anyway. Mm -hmm. So why not? To summarize... And to take from every email Leo Babauta ever sends you, just be in the moment, man. Be in the be moment. present. Present-minded. Yeah. You're in this class. Accept it. Exactly. Last question comes from Wild Dog. <laughs> what? Is it a dog? <laughs> no, it's a guy. No, he's just... So I guess DC looked at the Punisher, who's a Marvel character, and they're like... Is that a hockey player? Whoa. A dude who goes around just shooting people. That's That's what we need in our comic books. So they just get a guy who's got a hockey mask and a jersey and like an Uzi and he just shoots criminals. Okay. While wearing his own old hockey jersey. So to clearly <laughs> identify himself. That's yes. That's a bad idea. As a man who goes around as a basically mass murderer. Okay. Awesome yeah, hero. got my last name on the back. <laughs> Wow. Good job. Good job, Wild Dog. Oh, my God. Good job. Uh, and he is actually the lamest superhero, according to this particular list from Heavy.com. Overall, decent list. Gotta say. Uh, Squirrel Girl being on there actually kind of ruined it a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys make one little tiny little tweak to that list, I might say it's better than the other one. But... Yeah, you just had well, I feel to like she might have been on it. the other one, too. I'm I don't think she sure. was. Or if she was, we skipped over my eyes glazed over and just I I rejected you, you what I saw. to intake it. Exactly, you know? Sometimes okay. you just must reject that which you see in the world because it must not be true. I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't know if that's true. No, Martin, if you believe something and you see evidence, cold, hard evidence, uh, that disproves your belief, ignore that evidence. This is bad advice. No, just, just ignore it. It's not real. Okay. You know what? Your beliefs are okay. You're right. You can believe what you want to believe. Yeah, if you don't like me saying it's bad advice, just pretend I didn't say it. Naruto said believe Done. it, and he became Hokage. That's true. You Am know? I Hokage? He didn't say no, I'm not. analyze the evidence and shift your beliefs to become analyze. more... <laughs> analyze cube! <laughs> this is just becoming... This is going off the rails right here. <sighs> anyway... <laughs> I forgot the last superhero's name. Wild dog. Wild dog. Wild dog. Not Modoc. Wild dog. <laughs> His question is, nowadays there are so many services online that want you to make an account. So do you have to use the same email address to sign up for all of them? How can I keep from giving my email address to a million random services? Oh, well, this is a quick one. Uh, I have two addresses. One's for professional purposes and one's for random nonsense. Yeah. But I also unsubscribe to almost everything they send me, so the difference is minimal, effectively. I have several. Yeah. So um, the first thing I'll say is I actually didn't do this for a long time, and then I, I read about somebody getting hacked and realized it would be a good idea. If you have a recovery email for, like, your bank or, like, gmail or something like you should have like one that no one knows about and that you don't use to sign up for services so like uh like my bank account recovery email is not the same one that i use for everything else and in fact it's one that nobody knows Ooh. i don't use anywhere i don't email anyone with it it is because like it's kind of ridiculous that people that like recovery email is a is a thing yeah, it's so easy. Because people are just like, oh, I'll just I'll just set the recovery email for my bank account to be the same one that I have everywhere and that everyone knows. So now everyone, like if anyone wants to target you, they know that that's the email that they would need to target. So that's something that I didn't even think about for a while, but I just thought about that. Anyway, it's kind of besides the point. Um, caveat here. 
I think that the College Info Geek newsletter, if you choose to sign up for it, is something that you might want to use your email for because we strive to only send quality emails that are helpful. Oh, yeah. That being said, there is something called, oh, what is it called? 10-Minute Mail, I think. Yep, 10minutemail.com will automatically generate a basically self-destructing email address for you. So if there is an account that you need to sign up for that you don't care about, you literally like, you just need it for 10 minutes. I don't know what it is for. Huh. You can do that. You can, so right now it's like K23539211 at mervertibert.com. Yeah, so you can grab that. For 10 minutes, you can get whatever email comes to that account. So if there's like an account activation image or what, or uh, email, you can do that and huh. then the email will be gone forever. So you can use that. I, I have actually never used it. I just know it's a thing because I've seen people sign up for my newsletter using these email addresses. Oh, they're and just then getting they, that book. They just get the book. And Which you know what? Fine. It's fine. That's if they fine. want, I'm not like such a heartless cold marketer that I don't want people to get my book if they don't actually get emails. Like, no, read my book if you want. It's just a good yeah, way. I mean, if anything, it's they good might business. Like it and come back. Yeah, right? You know, it's good business to build an email list. Because if YouTube explodes someday, I still have a way to contact my subscribers, you know? Yeah. Good good business, but I still want people to read the book. Anyway, that is one way to do it. Another way to do it is, like you said, have like one crap email address and one good email address. I actually have all of my email addresses forward into one main box because I don't want to use like Outlook or anything to organize them all. Yeah. Uh, and then I just have smart filters. So if, you know, I really don't like something from Twitter, like a specific type of email, I'll just filter that out. Another thing you can do is you can use something called plus notation. So say oh, yeah, I've never your used email that. is swagdude420 at gmail.com or something. You could do swagdude420 plus spam at gmail.com when you sign up for some spammy service that for whatever reason you're signing up for. Um, the emails will still get to you, but then what you can do is you can set up a filter. So any email that is addressed to swag dude, four twenty plus spam is actually going to go to a spam folder or it's going to go to the trash or whatever you want, you know? Interesting. Uh, you can and that's do that. Gmail specific, right? That no, I think that is email, all email. I think really? that's just how email works. Huh? Yeah. We um, have avoided knowing this way back in the day. There was a vulnerability in Amazon. There was this guy, I think his name was Matt Honan. Uh, he was like a, a writer for Wired Magazine. And uh, somebody was able to call into, I think, like Apple customer service or or Amazon or something. I, I can put the link in the show notes if you want to read the article and the whole story. But upshot of the story is his email, just plain email, was in Amazon. And that somehow enabled hackers to get access to like all of his stuff. I don't exactly know how. Um, but... I went into and Amazon and put like a plus notation on my. So it's yeah, like how little, Apple and Amazon security flaws led to my epic hacking on wire. This was back in 2012. Password. Yeah, I don't know. I think they were able to call into Amazon and uh, say like, "All right, yo, my name's Matt Honan. I'm definitely not a hacker living in Bolivia or something, and my email is you know mhonan at gmail.com. And Amazon's like, "All right, cool. That's your email because they have." humans who make mistakes and don't have good processes in place and i think what they may have done is give him like the last four digits of his credit card ooh, or something like that and then he was able to call apple and be like the last four digits of my credit card are blah 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 give me access to everything and then he was able to basically hack into the dude's mac and take over everything from there oh so and i bet you at this point five years later amazon has probably plugged this hole but at the time i was very paranoid so I went into Amazon and I changed my account email to whatever my email is, plus a huge, long, basically extra password at gmail.com. So that way, if anyone ever wanted to call Amazon and they wanted to verify who that person was by asking them if they knew the email, if they just said my normal email, wouldn't be wrong. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, this is probably not a thing you need to do anymore. It's, it's like interesting, ultra though. paranoid behavior, but yeah, I did that. But you know, Upshot, you can use plus notation to help with filtering your emails. Uh, or you can use those destructing emails, that kind of thing. I don't usually use them, uh, but it's it's a way to do it, you know? Um, back in the day, there was like something called OpenID, but I don't think that's a thing anymore. 
Yeah, you can use know. Facebook sometimes to log in, but I don't I don't really like Facebook. That's true. I don't like connecting things to that because if I ever don't have Facebook someday, I'll lose a bunch of accounts. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I, I sadly do have some Facebook accounts, so yeah, I basically have to keep Facebook for that reason. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, hopefully this helped. Um, we have two methods for that email thing. So to all you lame superheroes out there, you're welcome. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, show notes for this episode can be found over at CIGpodcast.com slash 143. And there you'll find links to all the things we mentioned, all the resources you can check out. If you happen to want more resources, including tools for increasing your learning efficiency, your productivity, tools for saving you money, maybe even helping you get a job, you can find all of our favorite resources over at collegeinfogeek.com slash resources. And on that page, You'll see all of our favorite resources on one page, but there's also a couple of links where you can find our college packing guide, which will basically give you a huge list of all the stuff we recommend for bringing to college, and also our list of essential books that I believe every student would be ben- would be benefited by reading. So check that stuff out. If you want to support the show, one thing you can do is also go over to iTunes and rate uh, write a uh, review or leave a quick rating. That definitely helps the show to grow and... Uh, go up the charts and more people will see it that way so massive thanks if you take the time to do that otherwise have an awesome day and we will see you in next week's episode stay cute